Pumpkin patch. Pop rocks. Pumpkin patch Is pop rocks. Is it supposed to taste like pumpkin? About to find out. <laughs> I can just tell, like, this is the horror for some listeners. Is they're like, no, no, don't, don't. They're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour, and they can't get to their thing to turn off the the sound before I start doing Pop Rocks. Oh, here we go. Chewing them. Hello, spooky people. Hello, trick or treaters. <laughs> Second week of October, and this is the Hot Box with Austin Crosby. The spooky episodes. Spooky October. episode number two. Special October. Sweet, sweet, spooky month of the year. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, we're trying to think of uh, new ways to keep you scared. Yeah including with my knee. Are you afraid of bats? Are you afraid of bats? How about skeleton bats? How about skeleton bats? Yeah. <laughs> Today I just imitate you the entire episode. That God. would be so entertaining. No, we actually have a lot to get going on too. So mm-hmm, whenever you're do. ready to move along, you know, it's your guys, we're sitting hey, in a sauna. It's, it's 134 degrees. Okay, Fahrenheit in this sauna. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have some treats. We went to Target. We did our ho- holiday shopping. <laughs> First up, I'm going to be sampling th- some things to get in the spirit. Because that's half of what Halloween is. Yes. We've got these cookies. You can't really tell what they are because of the because light. Because of the light. Yeah. Did, oh, is autofocus on the camera? Should be. Cute, cute. So, would you like one? Yes, thank you. Yes, of course. Cheers. Bing. Um, so you... As it's people like know. Sugar cookie. Yeah. As people know, Target has the best Halloween shopping. You think? <laughs> This is such a funny premise, guys. Strange Hope you enjoy to this. Eat in here. It's strange to eat in here, but it's less strange because I just trim my pubes. Which makes it totally less strange. Yeah, you're right. I thought about it. For sure. I'm going to finish my cookies. I think I think I'm good with one. I'm gonna pace myself. Hmm. Maybe I'll have yours later. A little treat for you. <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> Yeah, you know, these are normal sugar cookies. Mm-hmm. But I like that they have pumpkins on them. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. And of course, to drink, I got this Good and Gather Coconut Pineapple Sparkling Water. Can't read mine. It's peach. Uh, ginger peach. Ginger peach. Which, uh... Oh. I got this instead of uh, Topo Chico, which Target does not have. Damn, that's pretty good. <coughs> Frustrated me last week. I was doing my Topo Chico shit, and in the background, you were hype manning it up like that character in Scary Movie 3. And you were like, yo, what? Yeah, man, shit. Like, in the background, when I'm like... Which I don't mean to poke funny. Yeah, I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know how this has no calories, Pia, because it tastes sweet. It doesn't even make sense. It's not sugar. It's just flavor. I don't understand how that works. Me neither. But I have no it's idea. just the beginning. So, I guess before we move on to our next treats, <laughs> I will tell you while you were working a minute ago, before we went to Target, I was watching this movie, Discarnate. Mm. Good, good name. <laughs> it's on Amazon Prime. Okay. It had a kind of creepy cover. 
And I'll tell you what was most scary about this film. Hmm. I guess I'll give you the plot and out the plot synopsis first. Okay. In classical style. Doctor gets his son abducted by a monster right out of his arms under the covers. Whoa. That's how it starts. Under the covers. Fast forwards to they have this Latin woman. Sexy, hard nipple having Latin woman. Cool. Who makes this tea that her ancient peoples taught her how to make. Right? Okay. That lets you commune with the dead. Temporarily. To go into their world or whatever, however they put it. You know what I mean? Mm. So he's like, we need to make a serum. Mm. Out of that. (laughs) So that we can talk to the dead. I guess more readily. And so they start doing these experiments in a, uh, like a mansion, like a scare, not a mansion even though. It's like in California, like a Spanish style, like nice house, like an upper middle class house. Cool. (laughs) It has a pool, um, that's Hmm. like drained. Spooky. Yeah. Where they're like, someone died here, but it's like scary. It's like a scary house, but uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just an upper middle class house. So it's hard to say like haunted mansion, right? Sure. Um, and then of course they start doing dumb horror movie shit where they're like taking this drug. He's literally mainlining it into his arm as if it were heroin cool. so that he can commune or try and commune with his dead son. Who was a baby. So no, did he, he grow like a, up? No, he wasn't a baby. Oh, he wasn't a baby. He's like a fucking eight year old. Oh, eight. Why was he under the covers with him? Because he was scared of the monster. So... Then they start taking this fucking drug, which only works best at night. Of course. So, like, you can just tell that there were a bunch of cokeheads sitting around like, yeah, that is a great way to make a scary movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, it sounds so scary. Some Stephen King The main shit. actor, whose name I don't, did not commit to memory, um, is in so many movies as, like, Nazi, uh, you would recognize him. He's in so many movies as a Nazi officer weird that that's Um, his shtick yeah like he's in the pianist he's in so many movies Hmm. i don't even know how to you know what i mean there's no i name a nazi in the movie he's he's in it glorious bastard i'm sure i'm (laughs) sure he's in it he looks like hugo stieglitz but he's just a, a famous german actor that i don't know if he's been the main role in a movie and what i was bringing this up about the reason is because it's like scary how almost good it is while ma- managing to be so bad <laughs> because you could see and there's this thing that happens on like film sets like student film sets and shit where you look at something through a monitor on a camera and you're like yeah it looks lit you know it looks good lit <laughs> no i mean lit as like a condescending thing where you don't want to see how lit a movie is yeah um and then so an actor who was the best one you could get and pay money to, who's like been in things before, you know, you're like, oh, God, I got the actor from The Pianist. Like, he was in The Fucking Pianist. Yeah. Roman Polanski movie. What a, right? what a grab. So yeah. he's got like this great CD. Yeah, exactly. What a grab. And uh, it just all falls apart. Like, I don't know if it, the editing where someone will say something off camera and then it will cut to them. For too short of a period of time after they've already finished saying 90% of what they've said oh. and then cut to someone else where you could just tell it was editing to mask mistakes. Oh. But the problem is like why that's scary is we've all done that. Like that's, it's just like kind of student filmy. Mm. Um, but with a big budget clearly, but mm-hmm. you would still see there'd be shots where you're like, Oh, that's, that's a good shot. Like, you could see their excitement on every day of rapping. Yeah. And one of the craziest things is when this movie starts, it goes character designed and performed by, and then it's this guy's name. And I believe that is the guy that you've seen his performance art. I can't remember if it's called like transfiguration, metamorphosis, some shit like that. It's one of those kinds of words where it's that guy sitting at a table smearing shit Oh, on and his like face. whipping. It's from that that one movie that's supposed to be the most beautiful movie ever. It's also in that movie. 
Mm-hmm. But he does it separately as well. Yes, he, that's course. like his shtick as a performance artist. Is he like rubs mud on his face and like sticks sticks in his eyes and like smears it around and he's just gross. Yeah. I believe he's the monster in this movie. Mm. And it shows uh, it has a lot of cool like transformations of him doing that kind of shit that's cool. edited to film. But you say cool, but it's like not that good. Oh. But it's him. So you could just tell, again, those producers were like, we got him. You know what I mean? Right. And then all, this all goes and it ends and it's like executive produced by, directed by, and I think even shot by Mario Sorrenti. Oh, I believe is that? his name. You would most know him because he was that guy that dated Kate Moss back in the day and made that The fashion book. guy? obsession by kate moss yeah the fashion photographer yeah crazy that he made that movie and when you look him up you don't really find that movie like it's not on his wikipedia it'll talk about his project with john mayer before it talks about that movie weird is that bizarre maybe he's not proud of it no how could it he made be? like thirteen thousand dollars is well, what on, is what Prime imdb Prime. says it doesn't mean shit you can anyone can put a movie on imdb or on amazon Mm. She also owns time to be fun fact. Mm. What a crazy story. Yes, yeah, so that was a spooky movie. So it's a bad yeah. spooky movie. I will say I've started the next season of American Horror Story. Yeah. Apocalypse. It seems like it's going fine. Yeah. Snakes. Snakes. They brought a gimp back. Oh. I wonder if it's the same gimp. Who was Zachary Pinto? Quinto? Quinto. You know, Spock. Young Spock from the new movies. He was the gimp in season one. Hmm. His character. Cool. So, that's interesting. Nice. You know, I was thinking another good spooky show is uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Love that. Is that what it's yeah. called? And it's just Sabrina, I think. Um, yeah. Well, both. Such a good reboot. Usually reboots are kind of like, Meh, but really enjoyed Sabrina. Yeah, Sabrina, I love. Pumpkin patch. Pop rocks. Pumpkin patch, Is pop rocks. Is it supposed to taste like pumpkin? About to find out. Have one? Um, I was just going to share this one. Okay. Actually. I'm a pro at pop rocks. I can just tell, like, this is the horror for some listeners. Is they're like, no, no, don't, don't. They're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour, and they can't get to their thing to turn off the the sound before I start doing Pop Rocks. Oh, here we go. Chewing them. Cool. It tastes the same. But I'm sure they're orange. Or as in they say in Svenska, um orange. Orange. <laughs> Dude in Swedish there's a fucking word for orange, the fruit, apple scene. And also the color orange, orange. <laughs> and you can't help but be like, why don't you assholes just call it orange? <laughs> like clearly you discovered the color orange first I hope you can get the memo that everyone else is calling that orange. orange is that the same like in Spanish is the word for orange the same as the word for the fruit orange because I know it's like what is it in Spanish it's like anaranjado or no that's oh, yellow that's good. it's close that's yellow what is orange I don't remember it's been a while. Yikes. No, there's, you like those Pop Rocks? Those are good? Yeah, those are good. Yeah. So, in the same vein of how we were talking about Sabrina and American Horror Story. Yeah. There were some great, somewhat recent horror films mm-hmm. that I would like to bring to people's attention. Yeah, let's talk and about And I forgot it. to bring them up last time. The first, before I forget it, is Eyes of My Mother. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have that good of a rating on... Amazon or Netflix. I think it's on maybe both, but it doesn't have that good of a rating. 
Just dumb. And when I scrolled over it and did that auto preview, it was dubbed. And we saw that movie in theaters at the Savannah Film Festival, not dubbed. Yeah. And it's importantly, it's black and white, it's South American. Yeah. I believe it could be Central American. Could be Mexican, even. Could be Mexican. Yeah. Um, Latin American, let's say. Yeah. That was a really good movie. It was striking. It was actually terrifying. Yeah. It had very suspenseful moments and fabulous performances. Totally. And then to see it dubbed and see it with that low of a rating, I was just like, is that why? Yeah. Oh, yeah. People hate dubbed. I mean, that can really r- ruin a film. And I wish that was an option. I wish that they could just say, you could be like, sub or oh, dubbed. You, I'm sure you can on Netflix. So, I hope so. Any, if anyone wants to see that, it's about a uh, girl who's raised in an abusive home mm-hmm. who then takes on some of those characteristics of her parents and becomes the, uh, the horror monster, if you will, of this movie mm-hmm. on this farm. Yeah. To people who happen to stumble through this farm. And, I mean... In an almost Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of way, but it's a woman who does it. Mm-hmm. And it, it opens, I think it opens with an amazing drone sequence. Yeah. That you're like, oh, that's not your average drone sequence. No, it's striking. Fantastic. Um, it's that you clearly, I think they use like a red monochrome. Or you know what I mean? They didn't just like shoot in color mm-hmm. and then make it black and white. I think they used a sharper monochrome sensor on a camera. That's cool. And, uh, Put it on one of those nice ass drones. Yeah, it's like we were talking about the lighthouse last episode, mm-hmm. and you know I'm not a huge fan of black and white films, but in the eyes of my mother was one of those black and white films that <clears throat> I just loved. I mean, it also added to the horror element because there were these kind of dirty, like gross scenes yeah totally and the black and white really accentuated kind of that grit like you could see the dirt on everything because yeah. of the black and white and you very much got infrared. the sense that it was like not sanitized because they're in the fucking middle of nowhere yeah and uh one of those movies because of that drone shot which establishes how far they are away from everybody mm-hmm. you realize like when you call the police it's going to take a minute to get there yeah you know, you're not in a suburb so that was really cool yeah and just, you know, I love movies that, like, highlight your sense of uh, isolation, mm-hmm. especially in horror movies. Yeah. And it's like that, remember that, I saw while scrolling that movie Hush, where it's just, like, she's deaf. Oh. And the people are, like, coming to kill her, but she's deaf. I don't think I ever saw it. It was just, like, everyone talked about it for a week. You know, it was, like, a water cooler movie. And uh, it wasn't that bad, but the point being is that there was some isolating factor in that she couldn't hear. Yeah. She couldn't communicate with hearing. <laughs> she she could she couldn't hear quiet footsteps in the distance. Sure. A creak of a door. Mm-hmm. None of that. Or a guy yelling threats at her from behind. So so even that might be a little less scary because all those sounds make things more scary. But psychologically, they used it. Yeah. In that a, makes you sense. know, editorial's fashion. Yeah. Sounds good. So, Eyes of Your Mother, or Eyes of My Mother, mm-hmm. I recommend that. The Spanish name is like Oja de Mama or whatever the fuck. Oja de Mama. Um, check that shit out, because that's a good movie. So and it's on good. Netflix. It's just like weirdly underrated, pushed yeah. to the bottom. Yeah. And another movie like that that's more frequent, more recent, I don't know, I'm speaking already, not good, Oof. was uh, Good Night, Mommy. Oh, yeah. With the two little boys. It was a German movie. German, yeah. Or Austrian. Something like that. Some Northern yeah. European. Place. Central European, yeah. Central. Um, where these two little twin boys, their mother gets plastic surgery and comes back wrapped up and bandaged. And they have this nice modern home. Yeah. And uh, their whole thing is just like, how creepy can your own mother be if you can't recognize her face? Mm-hmm. And they just start to suspect it's not their mother. Yeah, they think she's acting different. They think she's a monster. She's like, maybe she's eating bugs and stuff. Yeah. And I just remember that shot has, that movie has a very good ending shot. Yeah. Um, and it has a really good twist. Sure. Really good twist. Yeah. I didn't see it coming. I mean, maybe you saw it coming, I don't but... like to say that movies have twists, because I think that that's... A reveal, maybe, yeah. perhaps. But a re- I'm, I'm in it for the reveal. That was a good reveal. So yeah, good, good night, mommy. Good movie. 
Oh, Whoa. wow. Wow. Okay, next tree. Ooh. Ooh. What is it? Those will have to Sour vampire bats. That's I think this is going to be a nightmare for auto pictures. Sour hurry. Um, yeah. Sour Haribo. Yeah. Um, uh, Haribo's uh, Sour Vampire Bats. Kids and grown-ups love it. I like that it has a bear um, in a cape with a jack-o'-lantern candy collector with a bat flying out of that as well. So he's like a wizard. Dude, this as many bats as you can get in one image right here. Batty. So, horror in another sense of the word, you know? <laughs> And this is why I wanted chopsticks, so I could reach in here without Funny. fucking shit up. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, guys. That detail. Dude, these are the best molded bat candies I've that seen. That is incredible. So much detail. Mmm, and they're nice and soft. Yes. Look at this. Ooh. I can do an autofocus. I'm Very looking. sour. Well, not very, but a good amount of sour. Oh. Isn't that weird? It is so weird. Mm hmm It's almost like flavorless. It's just the flavor is sour. Yeah. I think I'm into it, though. You might get addicted to these, but I have one more, and I'm going to put them back in the thing so they don't melt. They're so good. I like to how the bat, this is an anatomically pretty accurate way a bat flies. With their back oh, up yeah. and their head, their belly down, you know? Yeah. Cool. Yum. Mm -mm -mm. Haribo was a German company, right? Yeah. Gotta be. We knock it out of the park. Mm hmm. Every time. Big fan. Mm -mm. Oh, dude, these are exciting. Oh, wow. I'm going to put this over here because it's kind of by two. This makes good listening for people. <laughs> I know, right? So, other horror films. Suspiria. Suspiria. The old and the new. Yes. Are both fantastic. I love the old one for the soundtrack. I love the new one. For the, the Fifty girls. Shades of Grey girl. <laughs> yeah. And her sweet. Dude, that's she's a movie a where she's butt. like literally flaunting her pussy at you. Yeah, she's and like her nipples are always hard. True. Okay, so guys, these are... Also has amazing soundtrack by Tom York. Yes, also great. I mean, soundtracks... Tilda Swinton Tilda is so Tom. good in it. Mm -hmm. um, she In both the roles she plays, mm -hmm. which other people pick up on much faster than I did. Uh, I didn't pick up on it until you told me after the movie so um yeah other people picked up on it yeah i can't remember who else matt griffin picked up on it pretty quickly true he did it, once you kind of know something's afoot you see it pretty quickly yeah but i will say the original is still set in germany didn't we learn the other day because mm, we looked it up yeah i think we we're so. talking to someone about it where it's a young girl goes to a ballet school and mm. some shit is awry and it's spooky and it's haunted. Run by it's witches. by God. What was Argentino made that movie? Yeah. Um, Dario. Dario. Dario yeah, Argentino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Father of Asia Argento. Yeah, we don't talk about Argento. her. Argento. She's That's canceled. It. Yeah. Canceled. Father of her. Shh, father of her. Famous for being a child lover. And uh, you know, Anthony Bourdain no, dated dude, her again, at the end of his life. We don't talk about her. We're going to talk about da Dario Argento, who who's a good filmmaker. He makes this striking movie, Suspiria, a, a fantastic mm -hmm. color palette. And didn't we watch, he made an, that other movie we watched? No. Who was that? You're thinking of the guy who made it, Possession. Possession. We wanted to see another movie by Argento, but we weren't really excited about his other options. Yeah. So but the original Suspiria is great. The new Suspiria... Mm -hmm. I don't know who made that. I don't know the director. I can't remember who it yeah. was. I feel like they've made other things that were really good. I'm sure, yeah. But um, it's great, where it's the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey 
goes to learn ballet, but instead of it being the 70s or whatever, it's the 80s, Mm -hmm. and uh, the Berlin Wall is a big factor. It's the concept of like a house divided and gender gender segregation, um, you know, dealing with a family torn apart, Mm -hmm. and witchcraft, which I love. Yeah. And it has one of the best, um, it's not the ending scene, but it's like... The climax. The climax. Yeah, yeah, the climax is so good. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Okay. I fell asleep for it last time. But... Well, yeah, it's ti- if you're worn out, it's tiring. Guys, yeah. we've got zombie Skittles, which mm. Casey did not want to get. But there are normal Skittles in here, and there are also some that taste like rotten zombie, and it's like, dare you try? And then there's a sharing size. So I don't know how we're going to do this. You want to... You gotta try only one at a time, though. That's good. That's good. Whoa, way too many. Okay, you just shove them in your mouth. This is a mistake. Hmm. Oh, I think mine that tastes good. Like normal Skittles. Yeah. Well. Hmm. It's cool. I'm not a... Yeah. Mm. I'll, I'm going to keep eating them and I'll let you know if I get one that tastes like garbage. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a huge Skittle fan. But... I like the danger. You know what I mean? Also, I feel like it, I ate so many. If one of them had been bad in there, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell. Hmm. Yeah. It's like a bukkake. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that? How's it like that? Sorry? How's it like a bukkake? Well, because if you end up getting pink eye after bukkake, you don't know who you got it from. True. It all tasted pretty good at the time, but then you go home and you have a pink eye. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Me um, neither. They make cucumber Skittles. This one tastes like cucumber. Maybe that's a bad one. I doubt it. Probably just lime. I wonder if they're just lying. If any of them actually taste bad. Probably not. And they just say it to scare you. Maybe. Because I had a handful of like five. Mm -hmm. Business as usual. Right? Could be a marketing play. Yeah. Straight up lies. Straight up lies. Or maybe, you know, you just didn't get one. In Mm. that package even, you know? No. How rare are they? Their hit rate's probably like one out of every seven. I had to guess. Oh. Oh, you got one? It's surely it. What's yeah. it taste like? Rhubarb, maybe? Rhubarb? Rhubarb's good. Not in a Skittle. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you got it. That's me. weird because it's not inedible. What color was it? I don't remember. <clears throat> weird. It's gross. Yeah. Okay, you're going to get one. No, I don't want one. No, you have to try it. We can't leave the listeners only knowing if... <sighs> Let's talk about something. Oh, there's a scary movie? Yeah. What you got? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Silence. I really like 28... Weeks later. So this horror film? Zombie movie, yeah. It's a zombie movie, I guess, yeah. And it, uh, sequel to 28 Days Later. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it's weeks later. Yeah. And the family, the little kids return to, uh, London after the events of the first film, but it's been weeks instead of days. Yeah. 28 weeks, and, to be uh, specific. <laughs> yeah. It's not one cycle of the moon, but, um. Uh, like mm-hmm. four of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, no, so they then their mom was a carrier, and the dad had it opens a fantastic opening where the dad leaves the mom behind because the house they were hiding in gets over by zombies. Mm. But then the kids go back to their childhood home after they clear the city and they find their mom in the attic, and she's like almost fine she's not fine but like she's fine you know she's not a zombie 
Yeah. And uh, they're all like, oh my god, we found someone who is resistant, a carrier. Um, and then zombie stuff. You yeah. know, you can see how that would it's fuck things scary. up. scary, yeah. If you know about carriers. Yeah. But it was a good movie to see if you're, like, in high school biology classes. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what's a... It's about recessive genes and shit. I don't know if this is a scary movie at all, but remember when we saw that movie Christine at the Plaza Theater? Which is about... The girl who kills herself? No, it's about that guy, his car. Oh, yeah. He's got an evil car that, Mm -hmm. like, convinces him to murder people. And, like, it's this cheesy 80s movie where it's, like, starts out, he's a dweeb. Yeah. And then he gets this cool car. Her name is Christine. Mm -hmm. And he loves his car. And all of a sudden, he wears a leather jacket. And he has a girl who's interested in him. Whoa, he's cool. And then he starts murdering people because Christine tells him to. Yeah, I remember that. That's that was a gnarly. fun movie. Um, was this a Stephen King movie? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Stephen King. So prolific, that guy. Yeah. Remember that one time we were going on a long road trip and you downloaded... A Stephen King audiobook of short stories. Yeah. That was when I lost all respect for Stephen King. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was some some of the shittiest writing. Yeah. I think I've ever listened to. And it's like, you know, he's such a prolific guy. He's got these giant, thick-ass novels. Of course, he's going to have some stinkers. And of course, they're going to be in short story film that weren't fully fleshed out into to full books. And he just publishes because it's like, and eh, why not? I'm Stephen King, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, it was bad. again, it, the one that was so bad was like this. The car one? Yeah, an 18 wheeler. Or no, it wasn't an 18 wheeler. It was, like, no, it was a just car, like a shitty little car. Shitty car that just all of a sudden started eating people. And not even like anthropomorphic teeth eating. Rah, rah. It was like yeah. people would just go near it and they would just be swallowed up into this car it would just hit him over the head with its door and like eat him you know just envelop but them. hearing it being read was like ugh. yeah and it was long dude that, that yeah i can't remember where we were driving to but that was like 70 hours worth of book yeah that no one wanted no no one wanted that fucking shit kind of like these zombie skittles you know, it's funny because I don't understand the branding of these of these zombie Skittles because, like, you have one bad one and you're pretty much fucking done. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're trying to get find someone with a Skittle addiction and make them stop mm-hmm. being addicted to Skittles. True. That's a positive mm. spin. <laughs> right? Can you imagine? Yeah. Some, like, secret agent in the Skittle corporate office decides... I'm gonna make it my mission, you know. An undercover agent comes in from the FDA or the one that's about the food, and then poisons the Skittles <laughs> to make less obese people eat. It them. was literally Michelle Obama. Yeah, it was her. They were like, Michelle, please, we'd love to have you on our board. And she yeah. goes, I have this great idea. She can, she comes in wearing a uh, Mike Pence mask, you know, but it's clearly her because she's got those hands and that bulge from her package Mm -hmm. and she's just like sneaking around and they're like who is that mike pence is that you yeah it's me (laughs) (laughs) she like pours this vial into the skittle syrup container Mm -hmm. you know what i was thinking about earlier is like what actually constitutes constitutes something being scary because we were talking about that hulu original where they're stuck in the elevator yeah that's not scary at all at all because yeah, it was just it's ridiculous it's like the security guard and her or but he's not a security guard when she it's a twist that comes later but they, spoiler they get trapped in an elevator and he's like this handsome man and she's this beautiful woman and they're like oh no we're stuck here all weekend because it's friday night mm-hmm. and then they they have sex you know mm-hmm. you'd hardly say it was making love but when that kind of shit happens to me i'm like Okay, what's, where's the sympathy for you later in this? But basically after they have sex, of which she was consenting, Mm -hmm. he's like, I've got to level with you. I'm not successful 
<laughs> I'm only handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just this hot dude that you're attracted to anyways. Yeah. That you fucked in an elevator. He's like, actually, I'm the security guard. And uh, I watched you. You don't know me, but I know you. And I've watched you from this my desk every day in the security camera. Mm-hmm. And... I knew that you'd take this elevator. I've waited for my opportunity. I had my friend cover my shift or whatever. Kind of romantic, eh? Kind of, right? <laughs> if you, if, like, you could see him revealing it, maybe, and, and obviously this wasn't scripted because it's supposed to be scary, but it's like, you could almost see an earnestness in that. Like, actually, I'm in love with you. Yeah. Surprise. And, like, how how wonderful to feel like you were the girl he he picked to be obsessed with. You're so lonely anyways. Yeah. Why not just date the poor Well, it's the sort of <laughs> thing guy. that it's like, there's usually a bit of truth in that. I think with like most relationships, it's like someone noticed them first and they had to take action. Yeah. Rarely is it like the garbage man who comes to your house every week, sees you getting ready or leaving for work in the morning and like, plots to kidnap you because he loves you you know what i mean right so that they made this like no it was totally natural they were just stuck in an elevator together yeah with no cell reception for the whole weekend of course they had sex like that kind of shit Mm -hmm. and then he's immediately like i locked us in here i have the key and she's like you monster you'll never get away with like it escalates yeah where she could have been like oh weird well let us out and like here's oh, my number yeah cool let's go get call me let's go get breakfast and yeah. then get him fired call the police get a restraining order all that shit yeah like once you're out of there way to handle it <laughs> it's like girl you done fucked up yeah i mean you know what i mean not a real thing but still my point being though i don't know where it's hard to see things and go like what's an original scary idea yeah because it's kind of hard to communicate vulnerability, mm-hmm. right? Like we talked about earlier that film where the girl is deaf. Yeah. Hard for me to sympathize, but you can use that as a cinematic technique to mm-hmm. cut sound and yeah. stuff. That eyes of your mother with a drone shot shows you how remote they are, mm-hmm. right? Someone could have have you in a bunker like Cloverfield Lane or whatever. Like, All uh, those things American or American Horror, Horror Story. Story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just or you know, it could be a dark house. A scary dark house. Mm-hmm. Or there can be something creepy in the room and then the lights go off. Right. Stuff like that. But there's like where are the new original right? Because it comes About down to that. like space movies. Like I love um Event Horizon. I've never seen it. It's just a scary... It's a ghost sh- movie, but in space. Yeah, on that's a, cool. On a, a ship, you know? Which yeah. people have done a million times. Yeah, Predator. Wait, no, that's a wrong one. What's the one with... Alien. Uh, Alien, yeah. I mean, what about that one movie where it was that family boarded up in that house, and you just... You know there's some outside threat. What was that movie called? And the stepfather, it's the stepfather, and then the kind of main character is like a 14-year-old yes. black boy. Dude. Yeah. It comes at night. It comes at night, yeah. It comes at night. That was it's like big recommendation up there with those other ones we recommended earlier. Yeah. I loved It Comes at Night. Mm-hmm. So that was original, but that's psychological. Yeah, and as that's well. maybe that's the thing is you have to, the unoriginal thing is to have some scary thing that pops out. But the original thing is to make it psychologically scary. Yeah. And I will say for as much as like maybe you prefer Hereditary to Midsommar, it's unfortunate we even have to compare them. Mm-hmm. That was a sca- like an uncomfortable, scary movie, but bright, extremely bright and beautiful. And I don't think it was scary, almost though. jovial. Yeah, maybe At not no point scary. In that movie was I scared. It was tense. It was definitely tense. But it wasn't scary. Yeah, I guess it wasn't scary. Except for, yeah, no. Yeah, the one part really. I can relate with with that movie is when she goes into that bathroom hut and closes it and it's dark. Oh, yeah. Because I've had that same thing happen to me on mushrooms. Yeah, and they're, but they're on mushrooms the entire time. I don't know if they are. They are. They're constantly, like, drinking more of it. Yeah, or other things. 
I don't think it's ever explicitly stated that it's more mushrooms. Mm. Well, they kind of show the the colors changing and the the wind. They're moving hallucinating. And, yeah, they're hallu- It doesn't mean they they're don't on explicitly mushrooms. every time say they have more mushrooms. But they're very much like drink this tea. Yeah. And the girl will be like, ha ha ha, have some tea. Like obviously tripping as she's handing it to you. I guess maybe the reason though I nitpick about that is because I have a real problem with movies generalizing about psychedelic drugs and just being like, oh, it's a drug. And then people being like, so it was LSD or whatever. We're like, I don't fucking know what that was. It could have yeah. been ketamine or something. It could have been, I mean, I know that with them it was a tea, but it could have been like witch hazel or mm-hmm. you name it. I think it was definitely mushrooms. I think that because people uh, make tea with mushrooms. Sure, but I'm only willing. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm only willing to put a stamp of approval on that they're mushrooms the first time they say that they're doing mushrooms, mm-hmm. because that was like they're in a field. They're trying to have fun. Let's do mushrooms. We just arrived here. Do you guys want some of these mushrooms? Every other time, and the more ritualistic stuff. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Could be anything. You're just being picky about it no because i don't think that i think that that can put a lot of bad vibes on mushrooms and that's a really important thing to not do you know yeah for sure but i mean it's not about the mushrooms that give her the bad vibes because even you know when she's doing them at certain points she's euphoric she's spinning she's having an incredible time while there is still this thing in the back of her head that she can't quite focus on like something's fucked up something's fucked up yes so But I just, here's my point. You will meet people, I don't want to say names, but you know people who will represent that they've tried drugs that they haven't tried. Oh. Okay? Okay. I think a lot of those same people make films Mm. where then they have scenes that they're like, this is like if you tried that drug. I'm not saying Ari Aster is one of them. Mm -hmm. I think he's tried mushrooms. And that the experience that they had with mushrooms in the beginning was explicit Mm -hmm. and relatable to people who've done mushrooms. Yeah. I think as the movie goes on, you could still use that framework to extrapolate and go like, oh, I can only imagine what it would be like if I was on mushrooms and doing that, which is what you did. Hmm. But I think it's important that if people haven't done mushrooms, they watch that movie, unless they otherwise say that it's mushrooms, don't think that they were. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because not all not I mean, all drugs are mushrooms. It's definitely. Like, well, my point is that the drugs aren't causing the scariness. It's everything else. The drugs are almost distracting from it because it's making her happier. You know, that's what kind of soothes her away from even considering all the fucked up shit that's happening around her is because she's euphoric on these mushrooms and being distracted again, by just having a good time in this beautiful setting. Even then, you're saying that, you're going like, oh, she's distracted back up by the mushrooms. We don't know that they're fucking mushrooms. I really take issue with that. Yeah, because apparently. Because don't... If someone hasn't done Mushrooms and sees that movie and thinks that girl's on Mushrooms the entire movie, then they will carry that with them next time someone's like, do you want to do Mushrooms? Mm-hmm. When you don't know that that was Mushrooms. Okay, disclaimer. There's a million other... Don't watch that movie unless you've done Mushrooms. That's honestly good advice. Yeah. But I'm just... You get what I'm saying. There's a million other things, like a million other plants that do crazy shit like that. Sure. So, there's some that aren't as recreational as mushrooms yeah uh once upon a time when salvia was still legal i went i was i think i was 17 but you know so it goes went to a uh, smoke head shop smoke shop obviously tobacco because you know yes. not like weed was legal or anything and uh it was called mr happy go lucky or something like that since it's closed but we just walked in me and my friend taylor we bought some salvia off the shelf um and i remember there was different strengths we got the yellow which was the middle strength the black i think was the craziest um and then we went into the woods and i'd never smoked anything before anything so i i didn't even know how to to take a hit out of a pipe so taylor rips it first she's got more experience than me and she sits there for a second And then she jumps up and she looks around and she was like, whoa, whoa, hit that. And I was like, how? Like we, she should not have gone first. I mean, she needed to help me. So I was like, like trying to do it. Didn't work for me. Didn't get a, maybe I should have reloaded the bowl. I don't know. But that's something I regret is not having that experience because I was super stoked at that time to have that experience and 
never uh never got to fully experience salvia yeah i never did salvia was one that i was very aware of it being like a scary drug to do yeah some people it got them really fucked up they got in a bad place but i think you could say that about like any Anything. psychedelic i mean if the right person the the wrong person does it and has a bad experience they weren't meant to do it <clears throat> mm. like a schizophrenic person <laughs> yeah but again i don't think salvia's i don't know hard to say right no well i haven't done it but i've heard a lot of people talk about it i know that like it's the one where you most need a babysitter to like hold you and not let you run away and go do crazy shit you know and they the fact that it used to be you could just buy it at places like that um yeah. in, in a similar vein man the scariest one of the scariest drug things i ever had and i won't even i guess it's a drug was spice mm-hmm. and spice was something that some kid got back in the day and was like try this and we watched that movie dead girl mm. i've told you about because that movie blows my fucking mind i've told a lot of people about that movie but it didn't help that I saw it well on like the dirtiest drug yeah you know that I could imagine and it was just legal it's like you could just buy it and it was like that fake weed Mm -hmm. that got banned quick but synthetic marijuana it wasn't anything like weed it was just like you know yeah it was like weed for kids who didn't know what weed was and uh did it feel like weed the high that's what I'm telling you it didn't what did it feel like it just felt dirty it just felt like yeah you had not as good of you know processing going on but you were just like your heartbeat was fluttering and like just gross you just felt dirty felt mm-hmm. like you needed to shower and brush your teeth like right away mm-hmm. and then we watched this movie called dead girl where it's about these two like school shooter kids essentially you know a couple brandons let's call them <laughs> but more brandon was a nice kid but these emo punk kids who uh find in this abandoned hospital that they're exploring this zombie girl chained to a experimentation table in the basement and uh they're just like oh let's rape her over and over let's fuck her and they great they get this pact where they're like oh yeah we'll we'll take turns like every day after school let's meet at this abandoned hospital and like rape this zombie chained down and of course it backfires when it bites her yeah that's what i was thinking like how did she not She's chained right. down. Oh, chained, like, fully chained down. Okay. Yeah. The raper. She wasn't, like, just wandering around the basement. I, thought, I was picturing, like, she had a chain on her neck, and no. she was, like, huddled in the corner. Like, no, she was chained to a bed. Oh. And they were just, like, I think at one point they cut a hole in her to fuck. Ugh. Mm-hmm. That's gross. That was so gross. That's, like, that era of horror films that was just fucking gross. Like, human centipede, just, like, yeah. trying to be as gross as possible. Mm-hmm. Which I don't think shit. Human Centipede's a, maybe not a horror film. It's yeah, it's just a gross, a gross out film. Yeah, it's in the vein. But then there are movies like uh, Hostel and Cabin Fever that are kind of gross like that, you know? Well, there's like a difference between torture. Like Saw. Everyone talks about Saw. Like some people are like, that's my favorite movie. Well, Saw had creepy clown vibes. Really? I've never seen it. He used this little puppet to communicate with people. Okay. So he was a serial killer. He would lock people up and make them. He really did nothing wrong. He just was, other than locking him up <laughs> in, in torture devices. He, mm-hmm. And then they would, couldn't save themselves, so they would die. You right. know what I mean? To be like, you can save yourself if you cut off your arms. Right. So his whole thing was like, I didn't kill him. <laughs> they just didn't cut their arms off and survive. But he did. I mean, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But he had a little scary puppet. Weird. Mm-hmm. Speaking of puppets, dude, one of my earliest horror film memories I didn't even know what it was called until years later it was Puppet Master I remember as a kid my dad was watching the TV and Puppet Master came on Mm -hmm. he was flipping through the channel there was a scene where the puppet crawls on top of this guy while he's sleeping Yeah. and that just terrified me for the rest of my childhood I just thought like anytime you're sleeping a puppet could just crawl on you and (laughs) drill your brains out terrifying similar stories I saw Chucky on TV uh, we were on vacation in Colorado, mm-hmm. and my older brother was scrolling through channels, and he was like, oh, Chucky. And I don't know, it was like, I was like eight. I mean, I think I was a little too old to be so afraid of it. And there was like, 
my eight-year-old friend and like my younger brother we all just sat there and watched chucky he was like 15 he shouldn't like should have known should have known that it was going to terrify us and i remember the rest of that trip i just i don't remember what we did but i remember just thinking about chucky the whole time and being so fucking afraid of that movie and like oh god that i really did not like chucky i think it was because i am scared of dolls yeah, it's mine. I don't like dolls. I did the same thing, man. I saw Chucky when I was like five. Mm. Child's Play is actually the movie. Probably, yeah. That's literally what it's called. Yeah, Chucky's it's... a character in Child's Play. Right, right. And when I we rented it, my mom didn't realize what it was. She's like, whatever, cool. And that <sighs> terrified me. Whatever, okay. cool. <laughs> Dude, do you want to show these off? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sweaty. Here. Look at this. Guys, these are gummy... Oh my god, you <laughs> look so crazy. You call me fangs. You look so crazy. That's kind of gross. It's a whole mm, thing of them. Those taste good, though. I don't like the way they taste. I like it. Mm. But I like that you like it. Mm-hmm. You can have them. You know what I mean? I will. I'm going to need you, though, to try them. these. There's two Skittles still out. I don't want to get a bad one, I though. need you to get a bad one so you can describe it eloquently for the listeners. Mm. So that's been chill, though. It's been scary. I was thinking it could be scary for a... We could do a thing where one listener gets particularly scared. Like, we say things to scare one specific person. Okay. You know what I mean? On the next show. How so? Like, they tell us their fear and we exploit it? Or... I'm not gonna ruin it. I love how as we've gotten sweatier, the the bats have gotten <laughs> blurrier because oh yeah, it's just steaming up. I've steamed <laughs> I've steamed the wall, so yeah. It's kind of nice though. So now we're just under the ocean. Yeah, now it's like super soothing. <laughs> mm. Love it. I think I can fix that by doing some of this. Yeah, I'm gonna wipe them. A little wipey wipe, and make the bats come back. Did it do it? Yeah. Okay, one more Skittle. Oh. Is it bad? It's normal? It's not... Deli- I mean, it's not the best flavor. Is that, see, that's what's I don't weird, think it's too. a bad one, though. Dude, I really want you to get a bad one so you can... I think I'd know. Experience. You would know. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. It's just a weird bra- branding thing. Yeah, strange. I guess whatever. Some people do that. Like, I would be a fan of um, that one Doritos. Made, like, one Dorito that was ghost pepper. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, like, roulette. I think that's kind of cool. Mm. I do like that. Yeah. I'm more into spicy as a surprise yeah. than, like, disgusting. Yeah. I'd be like, stoked if I got a spicier thing. I'd yeah. Be like, cool. But Whoa. if it tastes like hammered ass you know yeah. what I mean? like chemical fucking shit well yeah when you picked those up i thought yeah those are like the harry potter jelly beans and yeah. i never bought those because i thought ew why would i <laughs> why is that a selling point mm-hmm. <laughs> but it is there you go guys thank you so much i hope you enjoyed our candy review i hope you pick them out i hope you enjoy them mm-hmm. um i don't know if anything here tonight other than the cookies i would expressly recommend i mean the, the pop rocks were good i i would recommend the bats though yeah yeah the sour bats the haribo sour bats were actually pretty tits those then were the other week we had haribo bats cats and rats mm-hmm. those were amazing too yeah and those had the the sour sugar on the mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. which is some shit dude i think maybe that was trolley though maybe yeah I think that yeah was trolley if they're brand. not subsidiaries of the same haribo well, probably, but company. if you're looking for it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I guess for, right now my favorites are Booberry cereal. Yes. And the M&M's ghoul mix. So mm. check those out. Um, yep. And tune in next week, guys. And, so, you know, check out the Instagram and the YouTube and the Spotify and the Patreon and the website and all that shit. Yeah. Because we're gonna be, this is episode two of five of the Spooky Season. Mm-hmm. And watch all those movies. Hail Satan. Hail Satan.